everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see the slide. <coughs> Wonderful. Beautiful day in New York. Welcome everyone. My name is Melissa Armo. I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And I'm here to talk to you today about the trading strategy that I train, that I use daily, and that I personally created, okay? So we're gonna talk about a strategy to win in any market. Why do I say any market? Because sometimes the market is up and sometimes the market is down. So when you're trading, if you're looking for trades that where you need the market's momentum, where you have to have the movements of the market in order to train, you're gonna have a difficult time because the market's volatile, can change directions on a dime, can change directions on any given particular day. So what I try to do each and every morning is look for specific stocks. <coughs> Thank you, Kathy. And I see some people coming in late. Anybody that has any questions, you can just write it in the room and I will answer the question as we're going along here tonight. I'm the only person that can see the questions in the writing but I will say the question out loud as we continue. So anyways, I do gaps. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about what a gap is. If you've ever thought about trading the market for a living, you know, a lot of people, they come to me, they're doing this for a number of years, they don't seem to be able to make it, they're losing money, they're, they're not consistent. And what I found is that it's really the lack of a strategy that is problematic for people. They're not focused, they're all over the place. They use too many indicators, they use too many things. I don't do anything with fundamentals. I specifically am focused on technical analysis, okay? Now, for those of you that don't know what technical analysis is, technical analysis is using past price data to predict future price data. That's what I do. So I use it in a chart. But I specifically am looking at the gap Okay, and again, I'm gonna talk about what a gap is in a minute. But lots of people that wanna do this for a living end up not being successful. Why? They do not have a specific focus daily, or they deviate from it, or they have too many things that they're looking at, okay? Which again is problematic. <laughs> Thanks again, Kathy. So a lot of people work hard, and they study and they trade and they do class after class after class trying to get this trading thing down and they never get there. They never, ever, 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 ever get there. A lot of people think they're helping themselves and really they're wasting their time. Now, while it's great that everybody's here for this free webinar, you are not gonna learn my system here today. That would be impossible, okay? My class is 16 hours. You will never learn in a one hour webinar how to trade. And anyone, that thinks that they're gonna pay for a class that's cheap, by cheap I mean anything that's less than $1,000, is you're crazy. You're not gonna learn a good system with a, in an inexpensive class, okay? Even if you come and take my class, which my class is $7,000, and again, it's two full days on a weekend. Even if you come and take that, you're gonna have questions after my class. Training is learning it, it's a skill. You learn it, you do it, you go through the process, you learn more and you do it and you get better over time. So really the whole idea of throwing yourself into it, lickety split and thinking you're gonna get something really quick, really fast and really cheap is not gonna, is not gonna get you where you wanna be. And I find a lot of people think that they're working hard because they're spending 25 years trying to figure out how to trade. And they've done many, many classes, even though they're inexpensive, they've done a lot of them. And they've spent a lot of money on classes if they add it all up, but or if they spent many, many hours trading, they never quite get there and they're frustrated and they're floundering, but it's really that they have no idea what they're doing and a lack of focus and they're really focused on just way too many things. And so they're all over the place, okay? I'm not all over the place when I get up in the morning. I know if I like something, I know if I don't, I know if I'm going long, I know if I'm going short. Okay, or if I'm not doing anything, for example, at all. And feel free to write in the room if you have any questions. So anyways, no matter what your goals are to trade, you need a solid strategy in order to achieve them. And that strategy has to work, okay? It can't just be whatever, uh, like looking at two intersecting moving averages and saying, I'm gonna go long on everything that intersects on the eight and the 20. That, that, that's, it doesn't work like that, okay? 
There is an analysis involved. There's a thought process involved. As I said earlier, there's a skill set involved in doing what I do. One of the reasons I'm really good at what I do is because I've been doing nothing but gaps, which and the system I created for, you know, 12 going on 13 years. So the longer you do something, the better you get. It's like a sport. The more you pay, play golf, the better golfer you are, if you play a lot anyways. So one nice thing about day trading is you can work from home. I think this is a huge benefit for people right now. We're still in the, in the thick of it with COVID, at least here in Manhattan. 2021, many, many people are still working from home and some people are gonna go back to work. However, some people are splitting it. Some people are going back to work three days a week, gonna be home two days a week. Some people are gonna be home permanently and they're never gonna go back to the office because things have changed now in reference to office space and people working from home. Uh, I just had a friend that said they just told him they're permanently now going to be from home full time. Uh, they could go back, but they decided they didn't want to spend the money for to lease the space anymore. So you're going to see that happening. And therefore, you have the freedom to trade in the morning, at least Eastern, Eastern time zone in the morning when the market opens, if you want to and do your job as well from home too. And you can transition into trading full-time if this is what you wanna do. Now, if you wanna trade part-time, that's fine too. Like I said, you can do it one day a week, two days a week, or whatever works. But the nice thing about trading is you can make your own hours. And my day trading strategy offers people a career with really full-time pay and part-time hours because I don't trade that long in a day. Now, I may be in options trades where I'm watching them maybe in the afternoon, but I'm usually done with my J trades quick early in the morning, or I try to be. Unless something's still going and I'll hold it. I'm not going to kill a trade if it's still going into the afternoon. But I typically like to be done in the morning. I typically try to be done in the first hour of the day. And obviously, when you trade, you have weekends off, okay? I usually look at the futures on Sunday after 6 o'clock. I saw last night we were down a little. So sometimes I'll check that out but I like to really have the freedom that I have on the weekends. When I did mortgages, which was my previous job, I worked 24 seven, seven days a week. And it was all the time, holidays, everything. Cause when people are looking for homes, cause I did their loans, people are buying homes, people are refinancing, doing whatever. They're always working along with the real estate agents who are working 24 seven on weekends. So I like having weekends off, being a career trader. And again, any questions, plop them and write them in the room. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, trading is good for extra income. It has unlimited income potential, though, if you want to do it full time. But you can't make any money at all, not one dime, unless you learn what to do. Now, while you may have no clue how to trade and make money sometimes, you'll lose that and more if you don't know what you're doing overall. So it, if you don't want to be up and down, up and down, up and down, if you want to be like a straight line consistent or actually a line where you're moving up, okay, where, where if you're, you're going up, where you're making more money, that's where you want to be, okay? But steady as she goes, like you're walking down a road when you're trading, getting somewhere with it, constantly working on what you're doing, constantly trying to get better. And I do that myself. I'm constantly, constantly, constantly double, triple checking myself, looking at the market, rating gaps, re-rating them. And actually I teach my, I teach the class, the class I wrote that I created, but actually that helps me get better um, over time as I'm doing it as well. Any questions here so far? I see some, some new people. But anyways, I view trading as an adventure and it is something that involves risk. Nothing in life that is great comes without taking chances or risk. You have to be willing to push yourself to get to the next level. If you are not willing to push yourself to the next to get to the next level, then you won't get to the next level. And what I have found, and this is one of the reasons, besides the fact that many traders trading don't have a strategy that works or any strategy at all, I also find that many people are not willing to take risk. They say that they are, but they're really not. They're really not. Risk involves not just financial risk where you're risking money in a trade or paying for a class like mine where you don't understand what you're going to learn before you learn it. It also involves the emotional risk of putting yourself out there emotionally to do something and dream big. Dream big enough that you're going to do something to take action to create that dream. Because you have to take action to create the dream. 
The idea of never doing anything and never taking any action isn't 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 going to get you get you anywhere. Okay, life is about taking risks. Okay, and you have to take action in your own life to support this, and and the universe will support you then when you take those actions. Okay, you have to to do something to make a difference, to change your life circumstances and or your trading if in fact that's what you want to do. I'll share a personal story with you right now. Um, I'm in the process of, of looking for apartments in Manhattan. It's, I could talk for three hours about what I've been experiencing since I started this process and just recently even because I've been spending a lot more time looking recently. But I'm, I'm, I'm just, I said to myself the other day, I said, you know, Wow, you know, I'm, I'm. This is an experience. Like this is an experience that I'm, that I will never forget, and it's, and it's prepping me for, to go to the next level in my own life, and I didn't realize that when I started it. I just said, well, I'm going to look for an apartment, and now a whole new world has opened up for me. A world that I never knew anything about in New York. Okay, in New York City, that's where I live, and it's actually made me start thinking about the process also of, of, um, going to the next level. There's a threshold, okay? There's a threshold that everybody has to get through. And I think what happens is many, many to get to the next level, whatever whatever that is, whether it's the next income level, whether it's the next level in your career, okay? Whether it's the next, we're a promotion, whether it's the next level in trading, okay? So there's a cost involved in getting to the next level and it also involves taking a chance and it involves a risk. And so I think a lot of people throw themselves into trading, have no idea what they're doing, don't know what's involved with it, and then they get scared, they lose money, but of course they would lose money because they don't know what they're doing. So consequently, people get scared, they lose money when they trade, they don't know what they're doing, and then they flounder. And they're back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and this process could go on for eternity. That's why some people never become successful trading. And then they end up, as time goes on, growing and getting a very negative attitude about trading and a very negative attitude about the markets and money and everything else. Well, having a negative attitude about trading or becoming successful at all trading or wealth or money will affect your ability to succeed. It will affect you in a negative way, which you don't want to do. So then you work against yourself in your mind by thinking negative thoughts, which is very problematic, okay? So I'm the type of person where I'm very motivated always wanting to get to the next level, the next thing. So that's just my personality. But if you're somebody that wants to train, you have to get past that threshold, where that, whatever that threshold is for you. And again, there's different thresholds. You'll do this thing and you'll get past that threshold, then, there, then you'll do well with that, then there'll be another threshold. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a, it's a continuous process, all right? Silver, if you're typing something, I can't see it. There's nothing there. Anyways, where do you want to be by the end of 2021? Crazy to sound, but I can't believe it. Easter is a week away. Easter is early this year, but when I think about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it was just Christmas. It was just Christmas a couple weeks ago, wasn't it? I mean, this is crazy how, you're, how fast this year has flown. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it seems like 2021 is just rolling on by, and next week is April. So really, when you think about it, we only have nine more months left in the year. That's nuts when I think about it, really. Um, so when you, when you consider sitting down for yourself, I think it's a good idea to create goals for yourself. And I think, I think you say, well, here's where I am right now today, and here's what I want to be by 12-31-2021. I think that's realistic, okay? But, but seriously, sit down and think, do you want to be in the same place you are right now or somewhere better than you are right now? Like I do this personally, like I just told you, I'm looking for an apartment. Between now and 1231, 2021, I want to be in a better apartment. I want to be in a better place, okay? If you're thinking this with your training, you say, I want to have more money. I want to risk more money. I want to be uh, making more money trading. I want to know what I'm doing by 1231, 2021. Set goals for yourself. Because if you're one of these people that are floundering, you, you got to be just be honest with yourself and recognize that with this, within yourself and just say, I'm floundering. I have no clue what I'm doing. I, I, don't, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Be honest with yourself or ask yourself, why, why are you doing it at all? Okay. You got to have the goal of why you're trading because you want to make extra money or because you want to do it full time. I don't think it matters, but you need to know why are you doing it? 
just to say you're doing it for the hell of it and then never taking it seriously, you're consequently going to lose. You must take it seriously whether you do it for 35 minutes a day or whether you do it for the whole entire trading day, six and a half hours all day long, which I do not trade all day long. But either way, whatever amount of time that you're involved in the market's trading, you still have to take it seriously. And you have to watch your trades, okay? And, and so I'm here to talk to people about what I do so that you can make a decision and maybe hearing me will help you make a decision on how you can move forward. Do you want to learn my strategy? Are you ready to move forward and learn what I know? Which again, I teach in a two day, two day weekend class, but you will have questions after the class. I'm here to answer those questions and I'm here to answer them for people on the phone and in the live trading room. Any questions here so far? Okay. All right, let's talk about what is a gap. So what is a gap? As I said earlier, my strategy is gaps, but I created a system, I developed a system, it's a rating system based on rating each gap that I see, and I rate it using a 26 point system. That's the meat and potatoes of what I teach in the class. With just a very basic analysis of what a gap is, I'll go over it with you here today. There are bearish gaps, there are bullish gaps. This is a bullish gap. This was a chart here of Nike, we ended up doing this trade Friday, so I have this chart in here. Nike had a bullish gap. This day here in the 10th, it closed at one price and opened at a different price the next day. It gapped up. So what is a gap up, or what is a gap at all? It's when a stock closes at one price and opens at a different price. It can close at one price and open higher, or it could close at one price and open lower. So here from Thursday to Friday, Nike gapped down. Closed up here around 143, opened in the morning around 140. We shorted Nike on Friday. Okay. Kathy, I don't know if you can help Silver. His question here, his question is stuck. I cannot see anything he's writing. I don't know if you want to help him. It's been stuck for a while. So anyways, that's what a gap is. Okay. Everybody with me? So what I developed is a system and I really mastered a skill where I will look at a gap in the pre-market or in the post-market and I will predict where the directional bias that the stock or the market will go based on the gap itself. So I'm predicting the direction. Either something will move up or something will move down. Then I take the trade before the move occurs and that's how you make large profits. So my method is consistent because I can accurately predict where it's going to go very often by looking at the post-market and pre-market gap. And then again, after the day opens, after 9.30, I either do a day trade or an option or both in that stock, whether it's going long or short or buying a put or a call, okay? So I have a skill set. I have a lot of skill sets, but particularly with trading, I have a skill set to predict market direction, to predict stock direction, and I have a skill set to read very quick action that occurs when stocks and the market trades. So if something opens very, very quickly, I can read something within seconds. And we take fast entries in trades when we're doing day trades. I can read quickly and act quickly. And that is a skill. And it's something that you can develop. You can develop a, the same skill that I have. Okay. And so that's what you would learn. That's what you would learn from me. Okay. Also, I'm very good at shorting. Now, I do go long and I can make money going long, but I prefer to short because I find that shorting stocks has a niche, particularly because many, many people that trade the market do not understand how to short or don't do it correctly. And so I'm, I'm very good at that too. So I have a skill to really read what is weakness or what stocks we could short that are gonna drop to make money. But, but what I do is I'm looking to get in the trains, whatever I happen to do, again, day trades, options, both, and I'm looking to get in within the first 30 minutes of the day, okay? So large, big moves happen within this period, and that's why I wanna get in, because I'm trying to get a big move, okay? And you want a big move too. If you short a stock at $10, and you have 1,000 shares and it drops to nine, how much are you gonna make? $1,000. If you buy a put and it, and it costs you a buck and it drops and it's worth two bucks, what are you gonna make? One buck. Oh, it'll be 100% return on investment. So it's the idea of getting the momentum, which is a big move, 
Okay, that's what you want to get. So I created and developed a system to figure that out, find what stocks are going to move in a certain direction, and then also have a big move. And I created my system and called it the Golden Gap. So the Golden Gap is a rating system that looks at 26 points of the daily chart of the stock. The rating system is a checklist. This is what you learn in the class. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. This gives you confirmation and conviction that you can take the trade. Now, not every trade works. I don't have a 100% win ratio, but I have a high win ratio. And I use something called a stop in my day trades. So the stop is like the insurance that protects me because I know that some trades might lose. So I have a set risk amount that is equal or close to equal in every trade I take. And in reference to options, I let my options trades play out. So if my options trade, if I take it and it's down, I won't kill it. I'll let the whole thing play out. So if the ones that lose, lose, they lose in full. And the ones that win work, they, they go and they work, okay? But basically, when you take an option, the amount that you risk is the stop. You can't lose any more than what you have at risk. Everybody with me? So the points, the 26 points, predict the price direction correctly when I see a stock gapping. It tells you where the money is flowing. And why is this important? Why does it matter? So you know what direction to take the position to profit. Because going with the flow of the money is how you're going to make money. You won't move a stock, despite what everyone thinks based on what's happening with the Reddit people. You are not going to move a stock, okay, as an individual trader. You have to look and read institutional money. And that's what I look for when I'm looking for a stock when it's gapping. Are institutions buying this stock? Are they selling this stock? Are they shorting the stock? And that's everything that I figure out. And then I play with that institutional money. Okay, any questions here so far? We started a little bit late today, so I'm probably not gonna have time to go over go over the market today, but but you know, I usually post videos on YouTube. When I trade the gap, do I always buy or sell stock shares? This could be expensive. Well, first of all, I trade on margin, Ramon. Do you know what margin is? Second of all, if you think it's expensive, you can trade the stock using an option. Options are less expensive. Why? You pay the cost of the price of the option and you don't have to trade it on margin. Even though more expensive stocks like Amazon, the options are more expensive, it's a much cheaper way to trade the stock. Do you know what margin is, Ramon? Okay. Well, I don't think it's expensive to day trade because you get margin. That's my personal opinion. You could open up a proprietary day trading account with $2,500 and get 10 to 1 margin so you could have 25 grand in buying power. So that, that to me is very reasonable, to be honest with you. If you had a prop account with 10 grand, you'd have 100,000 in buying power. I think that's very reasonable. So I, I personally don't think it's expensive to day trade equities, given all the options available to people to trade the types of accounts that are out there. However, if you can do options, and some people are doing options. I have an options newsletter. So it's whatever works for you. Okay, you can open up an options account with $2,000. Now, whatever size account you have, your risk, your set trade risk has to be based on the size of your cash account, regardless of how much buying power or margin you have, okay? Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, golden gaps have about an 80% of their move in the first 30 minutes of the day, which is fabulous. Nike was one of those on Friday. I call this the money move. You just play the move each day, boom. Play it, you're done. Take it, get in, get out, done. And again, this is day trading. So we're in, we're out, we're in, we're out. And it makes it, you know, wonderful, actually, to be able to get in and out so quickly and sometimes make thousands of dollars in several minutes. Now, this is speci specifically, we're talking about this, this is day trading on margin. We'll talk about options later. So let's look at some of the day trades that I, we did. Last week was a good week. This whole last couple of weeks have been really, really have been good for the day trades. I don't know why we've had some, some really nice moves and things, but this was the day here, Apple gap down. Stock closed here, gap down, boom. Day was the 18th. This is Apple, it's a daily chart. Here's the gap. You see it closed here, gap down. I rated it, rated good, we shorted it. Entry was 122.90, boom. Risk was 2,800, 
Exit was 120.80, profit was $14,700. Why? Got a big move in it, chunked on the size. This was a really good stop too. Now, as far as buying power, what if you can't take 7,000 shares? Well, you could take 1,000 shares. Guess what? You still would have made money. You still would have made a couple thousand dollars on 1,000 shares. Why? We got the move. So this was basically a $2 plus move. Again, you have 1,000 shares, something moves a dollar, or $2, what are you going to make? Two grand. You have 2,000 shares, something moves $2, what are you going to make? $4,000. So, you know, you make it work with whatever money you have, but getting back to the original thing that I was talking about earlier, to Ramon's point, work with what you got, okay? If you do not have a big enough account to take 7,000 shares of Apple, take 100, take 200. Be content with what you have if you're making money. Green is green, I say. You know what? I just got done telling you that most people are losing. If you can make money Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, by the end of the week, your account is bigger. It's bigger than it was on Sunday. So work with what you got to build your account up. Here was the Apple day. So here's the gap. I just want to really show this here. You can see it. This is 4 o'clock. This is one minute. 4 o'clock closed here. Boom. Gap down. This is a one minute. Here's the whole sell-off. Do, 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 do. This is one where I decided I wanted to hold it because of the fact that I really, really had a high level of conviction in this to continue, and we had such a good entry in it um, that I decided to continue with it. So this was a nice short. Okay, again, stock closed here, gap down, boom. Okay. Any questions about Apple? Let's go to the next one. 316 play of the day was the SPY. Now this is expensive, but you could have bought calls in it. We went long the SPY. This was a bullish gap. So here was the day in here. The irony was we made money going long here. And it closed red on the day, which is really funny. Only I could do that. Stock closed here, gapped up. We went long. Got a perfect entry, perfect exit. Got out, boom. Entry was 397. 2,500 shares, risk 27.50. Exit 397.60, boom. Profit was 1,500. Very, 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 very nice trade. Quick in and out. It was 60 cents. Again, I like to be in and out fast. Here's the gap. So again, this is the one minute of the SPY. Closed here, gapped up. We got in here and we got the push. Boom, out, done. Done for the day. That's it. So again, I try to be in and out quick in the morning unless I have a high, high, high level of conviction, which I did have an apple. And that's one of the reasons that I ended up holding that apple. Plus we were up so much in it. I mean, you could put the stop at break even in something if you want to hold it all day as well. I don't, tip, I don't typically do that, but you could. Any questions here so far? Okay. Let's look at Lily. Lily was 315. That was one week ago from today. Stock closed here, gap down. It was Monday. It was a gap down. Entry was 191.60. On 1,000 shares, which was 26.50. Another fabulous mover. 188.45 was the exit profit, $3,150. This was a short. This was a gap down. I rated it in the morning. It rated good to short. We did the trade. Here it was. This is the one minute. Stop closed here, gap down. Open, rally, boom. We're in it. Get the drop. Boom. Beautiful trade. Again, I tried to get in and out quick. I tried to get in and out of the morning. Ramon. Again, I don't, I don't know if you understand margin, Ramon, because you're asking me questions, which makes me think you don't. So let's go over for Ramon. Ramon is saying, how much did it cost? If you have 1,000 shares, somebody tell Ramon. At, let me find the at sign here, 191.60 price. Somebody tell Ramon. Galahad knows the answer to this. How much margin, how much buying power available do you need to take that trade? This is like 
just should roll off the top of your head. This is really easy math, people. But if you don't know how to do this, you got to get a calculator. You have to buy a calculator and have it right next to you. Galahad, do you, do you want to figure this out and tell Ramon? Or anyone else, quite frankly? I think, I think you meant to say this, Galahad. You need $191,600 in buying power. Uh, that, that is just simple math. 1,000 times 191.60. Ramon, are you there? So, again, this might be a little bit harder for people. How much cash would you need in a retail trading account? Most of them are what? Four to one margin. You would need approximately, I'll say 48 grand. It's roughly around there. It's roughly 48K. Divided by four. What if you don't have $48,000? Or what if you have a prop account, 10 to one, 10 to one margin, you need a lot less. You need to run 19,000 or 19,6 cash to take this. Ramon, let me know you understand that. And you're asking about margin. These are not hard and for, for fast share quantities. There are people in my trading room that may be taking more size than me. There are people in my trading room that may be taking less size than me. So this is what I consider an advanced trader risk, which is pretty much anything, to be honest with you, over, I'd say, a $2,000 risk, or even over $1,500 I consider advanced. A beginner, you take under 1000 even 500 Let me know you understand that, Ramon. So if you took half, if you took 500 shares, you need what? 500 shares with a 10 to 1 margin, you'd roughly around 9 grand cash to take it. If you took 500 shares at a 4 to 1 uh, buying power margin account, you need roughly what? 25, 24. Depends where you have your account. Does that make sense? So, you and you would have made what? 1,500 bucks. So, say you were at a prop place and you took 500 shares and you would have needed roughly around $9,000, you would have made what? Around 1,600 bucks, 1,500 bucks, depending on, depending on how much, where you would have got out exactly, okay? That's pretty good. That's pretty good for $9,000 to make 1,500 bucks with nine grand. I think that's the point that you're trying to make, Ramon, and I think I just, I just, I just made the point pretty well. I think you're saying you need a lot of money, but I'm saying where are you going to put $9,000 to stick it in a bank or anywhere and earn $1,500 in interest? Nowhere. If you couldn't even put $9,000 in a 10-year CD right now and come away with $1,500 in 10 years. That's how stupidly low rates are right now, even though everyone's saying rates are going up. Rates are stupidly low. So the fact is that if you have money, you can turn your money around and make it work for you a lot better by trading. And again, this isn't investing, okay? This isn't investing. You're not buying and holding and buying and holding. You're in, you're out. 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 You get it? Whether it's day trades, whether it's options. Now, I try to let my options work a little bit. I'm trying to look for about 50% with my options, okay? But even that... Even that is huge, considering where else you would put your money in a bank or someplace for as far as what you would earn on it, okay? So the point I'm trying to make is that you can make big profits when you get the money moves, but you've got to find what stocks are going to have the move like Lily, find what stocks are going to have the move like Apple so that you can get in them. Make sense? Success and large profits comes from quality, not quantity in place. The more plans you have, okay, the, it's it's not about this money, this money, this money. The key is quality. We're looking for quality, quality, quality trades. 
quality trades is how you're going to make money less equals more in reference to the market and if i take a good trade and i'm in and out quick like we did nike on friday boom i'm not doing anything else the rest of the day i'm just done okay i did my job i'm in and i'm out i made money i'm done i go on with my day it is about quality this is another thing that i do that's unique i am focused on quality and a lot of people are trading all day long many many day trades all day long till four o'clock i don't do that but I do use a checklist to determine which stocks I'm trading. Like the Lily, I look at the Golden Gap 26 point checklist, I rate it, I determine which one I'm doing. It is a professional bearish gap rating system. I also have a bullish class too, but I find the bearish class is more popular because I do do more shorts than longs. So the bearish class is this weekend, March 27th and 28th. The purpose of my system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist, okay? And that helps you determine what to do. The whole philosophy behind it is to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big moves in the day, preferably in the morning. Early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. And precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward, which obviously is what you want. I find one to one is a good risk to reward for day trades. Sometimes we get many, much, much more, some bigger ones like the Apple. Okay, Nike was bigger. I got out a little early in the Nike. I don't have that in here, but I, it, Nike had a huge move. Now, we, I also do options. And I want to go over this Facebook option. This is a daily chart of Facebook. This really had a nice rally. Today, it got almost to 300. I've been liking this long for a long time. We had an early entry in this. We, got, we had some beautiful trades in this Facebook. I didn't do it in the last two days, but we got this very early on. If I had done this out longer, I, I, I might still have been in it, but I did short trades in this. I called 270 calls March 4th in the Facebook. And let's go to March 4th. March 4th was here. Okay. So stock closed here, gapped up, rallied, then it closed here, gapped up, rallied, then it closed here, gapped down, fell, then it closed here, gapped up, rallied. And then it took off like a rocket, broke out in here. Really nice move. And let me go back. It was really cheap though, actually. $3 was the cost, sold at eight. So the risk was what? 7,500. This has nothing to do with margin. It has nothing to do with margin at all. This is the full on amount. If you want to risk an advanced risk, which this definitely is, and you could have taken one contract, you could have spent $300. You could have taken two contracts. You could have spent $600. Either way, it was a beautiful profit. And you could have made 12,005. You would have had to hold through this because you see how wiggly jiggly it was before it went. For those of you that are not familiar with what I do, sometimes I call trades and you do have to be patient. And sometimes they go the same day. Sometimes they take a little bit of time to situate themselves. But the return on investment in this trade was 167%. It was a great call. I knew this was higher. And I, I saw what it did the last two days, and I just didn't get that move up to 300. If I had called these out longer, I would have. That same day, a little bit later in the day, I called another one in the Facebook. Oh, wait a minute. This is the same one. No, my assistant didn't put the right one in here. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. This is the 275s. Oh, shoot. Here, let me see if I can find the 275s. He put the numbers for this in here, but not the trade. Ah, oh, crap. It's going to take me too long to find it. I'm telling you this was the 275s. So now you know. Oh, no. That's the next one. This is a beginner. Hold on. Let me see. He does have the 275s in here. Sorry. Oh, this is the beginner risk. Okay. He did this for me. If you only did take two contracts, boom. Boom. We spent $600, sold at eight, profit a thousand. So this is beginner risk right here. You're not gonna lose more than 600. And this is not on margin, it's just cash. Anyways, the same day later I called, well, not much later, the 275s. This is the one that I was thinking. So I called a second Facebook. I saw it was gonna get to 270, 275. This one was cheaper, cost was two bucks, same day on the fourth, then it had the breakout, breakout was on the 11th, we did this on the fourth, cost was two, sold at four, it was a nice trade, 100% return investment, and again, 
your risk should be the same or equal to the same in every trade you take. So I risk more of my options because I like to do more expensive ones sometimes, and I also like to hold overnight to get the big overnight moves. But this was 100% return on investment. If you bought four, 800 bucks. Could have made 800 bucks, nice trade. And really it took a week, but that's not the end of the world. Sometimes I call them the same week, sometimes I call them out two weeks. I'm usually not doing them out longer than that, or like I said, I probably would have done something longer for the Facebook to get it up where, it's, where it just went today, but I typically try to do them smaller time frames for the cost, because I'm looking for the move to happen pretty quickly. Any questions and options while I have these up? Any questions at all on options? Anyways, the whole concept and philosophy of everything I do with gaps is looking for institutional money. That's what the points are about. So why trade gaps? Why do they work so well and pay so well? Because gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it, which is what you want. And Facebook is a great example of that, actually. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. The sense of urgency is what? People are either buying or selling, all right? A Facebook today actually even, let me see if I can pull this up here today. Facebook today even almost looks like panic buying up into that area of um, the 300. Really, people were running it up. It sold off into the close. But that's rare where you get panic buying, but that can happen too. But either way, when you have the event, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you are trading on the side of power. And that's how you can make money as one individual, whether you take 100 shares or whether you take 10,000 shares of something. There are many, many different people trading the market of all kinds of different shapes and sizes and account sizes. So you will get there if you want to risk more over time, but first you have to get good, okay? So what's the whole philosophy behind the Golden Gap system? To analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision of the directional bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. To make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, that's what I do in the one minute. And we're just talking about that earlier. I'm quickly in and quickly out. And that has a high degree of focus and accuracy. I like to do those trades fast for the day trades. I'll give options more time but I'm looking for bigger moves in those, so I have to give them more time. And I'm using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick, which allows me accuracy in the direction, and then I'm using the one minute chart to allow for good risk reward trades with accuracy. So that's the whole thing that I'm doing. And it's really about the strategy. I mean, if I focus on that and don't deviate from it, I will make money. And it doesn't mean that every trade that I take wins. I have some trades that lose, but I focus on the system every time, knowing and having the confidence that more trades will win than lose as long as I stick to the system. For example, today, I did no trades. There was no trades that met my criteria. I didn't trade. So it's very disciplined. I didn't make any money today. I didn't lose any money today. I'm sure I'll do something tomorrow. But some days I get up, there isn't anything that rates well. So then we don't do anything. So it has to do with really staying consistent and focusing on that strategy and not deviating from it, the where you see the results, the results of what you're doing. But trading the market's fun. It's exciting. Every day is different. I mean, I have no idea what tomorrow will bring. I have no idea what I'll do tomorrow. And it really does keep you on your toes. I truly believe that one individual can trade the market successfully as a career. As long as you have a dependable method, you do have to have a good attitude. You won't make money with a good attitude and no system, though. I'll, t I'll say that. Can you screw up trading if you have a bad attitude and a good system? Absolutely. You can make dumbass decisions. What do I mean? You know, not getting out of a trade, getting, you know, piggish about a trade, for example. But, you know... The central structure to trading results must be a strategy with a solid foundation that is based on accurately reading price action, and I'm doing that in technical analysis. That's 
It's the technical analysis in the gap, okay? For me, it's the details. Accuracy counts on all fronts. You have to have a quality strategy, a good risk to reward, the right entry, the correct size, proper exit, okay? And again, I'm, I'm, you're not always gonna get out the high of the day. You're not always gonna get out the low of the day. I could have held Nike much longer, much, much, much longer. I did a good job with Apple. I did a good job with the Spy actually too. But you know, there's many times I get out and then it keeps going, but I make money. So, so that's all my job entails, doing the best that I can, getting the right pick. That's something that I'm focused on. Getting the right entry, I'm focused on that too. Okay, any questions here? Big money is power, that's for sure. And you have to learn how to read it. You have to learn how to predict it. Where is it going to go next? Is it going to sell? Is it going to buy? Being successful in the market takes detail and a certain level of precision. Remember we were talking about that earlier about the floundering? When you're floundering, you for sure are not detailed at all. It can make a huge difference in your trading and making money because you could have one blow up losing day if you do something stupid and you don't want to do that to yourself. And again, going back to what Ramon is saying, don't risk more than you can afford. What's wrong with that? That's normal. Even people that have millions of dollars have to work within the confines of what they have available. No one has unlimited funds. Not even Warren Buffett, as wealthy as he is. Now, while he could probably borrow, borrow lots of money from banks, plus what he has cash, but really it's not unlimited. I mean, when you think about it, think about what happened back 2007, 2008, you had massive, massive companies and huge big banks that were, uh, that were in financial crisis. So everyone has to work within the confines of what they have, big or small. It does not demean you to risk small amounts in trades. In fact, it's a very intelligent decision if you have a small account. So you have to think like an intelligent person and act like an intelligent person. It is not demeaning to take a small risk. If you have a small account, that's the smart thing to do, okay? You saw the downfall of some of the, the hedge funds that, took, uh, that, that mismanaged their positions in the GME that were short. They had a lot of money, but that didn't mean that they made the right decision. They made the wrong decision, okay? They should have exited that trade that they were down in you know, far before the, 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 the trade went against them as much as it did, okay? So being smart, having the right skill set, the money's gonna come for you. It may not come as fast as you want, or it may come as fast as you want. You don't know. But I tell you, you have to have a skill set first and a trained eye, and this is something that I've developed over the years, as I said. So when you do the class, it's like a window into my brain of how I'm looking at something. It's a window into my eyes, how I'm, this is how I see this. And then I explain it to you. And you say, oh yeah, I see what she means. I get it, I can see what she's saying there, and so on and so forth. But without a good strategy, you're never gonna make a dime in the market overall, and that's all that counts. Year over year over year, if you're losing, I, I just don't know how people do it. I just don't know how people do it with no level of conviction and no, no uh, commitment. You're never gonna get there without commitment. And I've been had my business now for a number of years too. And it's amazing to me how long some people are following me and they have not signed up for my class. It's actually shocking. I say to myself, gosh, these some people are just really non-committal, you know, and, and I just don't get it. That's my personality, is I'm all all into something or I can't be bothered with it. But there's many people that trade the market and they're all the ones that lose that are non-committal. I say, if you want to be successful, you must commit yourself to doing this and give it your all. It doesn't mean seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It means learning what to do, paying for the class to learn what to do. Someone like me for my time, information, and knowledge. And then it means focusing 100% of your attention when you're in a trade. Whether you're in one trade or 10 trades, you must focus on them. And that doesn't mean, again, if you're in an option, you have to sit at your desk all day. But you can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. You have to set your alarm at certain times. If I'm in a day trade, I do not tend to walk away from my computer, but I'm in and out usually so quickly that that makes that impossible too. So you have to pay attention, okay? The market isn't gonna do everything for you. 
you, you're in control. You're in control. You're in control of your own success. Any questions? So here's this question Ramon was bringing up. How much might you need to do this? Well, you have to have buying power if you want to day trade. If you want to do options, you can open up a cash account. You don't need buying power to do options, or you could set up a margin account for options. If you want a referral for a broker, email me. There's prop places, there's retail places. You take my class, the Golden Gap course, you're going to learn my system and what I know, and then I'm going to help you along the way by answering questions and explaining things to you and going over them in the room and talking to you on the phone. I see Shelly here. I've had many conversations with Shelly. Shelly is new. Shelly's doing options. Shelly, are you there? Shelly. Yeah, Shelly's new. Shelly's on the options newsletter. She hasn't done the class yet. Shelly's trying to figure it out. She's working through it. You need a trading account wherever you want to go. That's up to you. The software is up to you, and you don't need to buy any special scanners. You can go wherever you want to trade. You can make charts look like mine, pretty much anywhere. Because it's really about focusing on the right information, which is what? It's in the technicals. It's in the gap. It's in the chart. You have to have access to charts if you want to learn what I do. I mean, that's number one. But really, any place you can make your charts look like mine. Any questions here so far? So what some people think is a lot of money is not what everyone thinks and vice versa. What do I mean? Ramon thinks that taking a thousand shares of, what are we talking about, Lily, is a lot. Well, some people don't think, even if you had the full cash amount, some people don't think $191,000 is a lot, Ramon. Some people think $9,000 is a lot. Some people don't think $9,000 is a lot. Do you know what I'm saying? Everyone's coming from a different place and a different perspective. And that's the one interesting thing I think that I've learned through my life, living in many, many different places and now also talking to many, many different human beings on the planet. I talk to people in different countries with different monetary systems and exchange rates. And I'm in the U.S. and I live in Manhattan, one of the most expensive places to live on the planet. So I have a very, very unique perspective about seeing how everybody looks at things differently. And, it, and it's really taught me a lot about people. And it's also taught me a lot about money. But it has a lot to do with how you think about money. Okay? Get to the point where you respect it. You respect it. And when you're in a trade and you're up and you get out and you feel good about that and you parlay that feeling of booking the money into another book and so on and so forth. When you get out of a trade and you feel bad when you make money, that is a terrible thing to tell your brain. It's telling your brain that booking money is bad. And why would you think that? Well, I had somebody email me the other day. They were upset with themselves. They got out of Apple too early and he felt bad. I said, don't ever, ever, ever say that again. You're giving a message out there to your brain and to the universe and the market as well that what you did was bad when what you did was good. You have to do the positive reinforcements when you make money so that you remember what it feels like. You understand? A lot of times it has to do with changing your perspective and how you're looking at things. But again, you won't make money without a good strategy even if you have a good attitude. You gotta have the strategy. Gotta have the strategy so you know what you're doing. You have to read a chart right. If you don't know how to read a chart, you shouldn't be trading at all. And I find a lot of people have no clue what they're doing. And you know what gives me the most perspective of that? Because I really don't go into details with people on the phone that ask me questions about the class in reference to charts. I mostly notice have noticed that through the years when I participate in these webinar events. Like I get invited to do this thing, that thing. I'm doing one on Thursday. I'm doing another webinar on Thursday. <laughs> and, I, and I hear other people talking you know, different things, whatever, before and after me, usually when I'm on the mic, right before or right after, whatever. And I say, gosh, geez, you know, these people are looking at things like totally wackadoo. Or they have so many different things on their charts, they look like a planetary solar system as far as their indicators. So, I mean, there's, there's just so much stuff out there. No wonder people get bogged down. I try to keep it simple. I'm really very, very... Uh, 
what's the word? Common sense. Common sense when it comes to trading. I think traders try to think they're going to make a lot of money being tricky, tricky, tricky. It's, it's really just about common sense and simplifying it for yourself. And part of that is the focus too. And you have to have a plan for booking the money. And, and again, that is your goal. That is why you're doing it. In order to make big profits, you need the right business plan. Sit down, figure out how much cash you have, figure out how much you can consistently risk. Don't risk different amounts on the trades and also figure out how many trades you can take a day and how many trades you can take a week. If I call five options trades on Monday and you can only take two that week, then you're only taking two until you get out of the two and so on and so forth, okay? You have to set uh, some guidelines for yourself and you need to follow those guidelines. It's risk, how many trades you're taking, when you're getting out, okay? Again, whether you're doing it as an option or a day trade. Any questions here so far? But you're doing this for results. If, if you're not seeing results, it's very difficult to keep going. One, one, you will lose cash, and two, you will lose confidence in yourself. There's nothing like making money to help your confidence. So sometimes when I have a bad day or a bad week, I have this amazing ability to then turn around and then the next day or the next week have a huge week. I get frustrated with myself if I have a bad day that I want to go after it the next day and make even more to prove to myself that I really have the skill set, which I very, which I do, but I very often am like that within myself, whether it's day trades or options. And so it's, it's interesting, like it's, you have to focus on making the money to build your confidence because if you've been doing this for a number of years and you've been losing, you're probably, your confidence has taken a hit. So you got to work on those things at the same time, you know, and, and sometimes that's challenging for people. I'm here to help people do that, but it's got to go hand in hand, okay? Because you will get in your head, like the Facebook. That Facebook train was down before it had that move. And I know some people just were really upset with themselves. They killed the trade before that trade went, and they knew they missed out on a lot of money. But they lacked the confidence to let the trade play out. So it's hand in hand with the confidence. But if, if you ever have questions, you can always call me. You can always email me. Shelly Shelley knows. Shelly does that. Shelly's on the options letter. Anyways, what's a good risk to our payout? Just in general, this is day trades or, you know, options. One to three is fabulous. On a daily basis, we're looking for one. But you can get much, much higher trades when earning season, typically, when stocks go to dream targets. Right now, we're at the tail end of earning season. Easter, like I said, is next week. The next earning season starts in the middle in the middle of April. So when stocks have earnings, they typically gap. Again, I don't know if they're going to gap up or down, and I don't take stocks into the earnings. But we have a busy season where you have big, large moves in stocks and earnings, like Nike was earnings. It had a huge move. It was a beautiful day trade. That was earnings, okay? So that's the time to be looking for piggy targets. That's the time for, to be looking for bigger moves. Or if you have the market with you. Any questions here so far? Kathy, I'm almost done. If you can let me continue a little bit here since we started later, let me know. Is that okay? Anyways, getting back to what I was talking about in reference to working from home, where people are at, Job security in today's economy, today's world is not the same as 25 years ago or 10 years ago or even five years ago. What we think is a secure job today may be gone tomorrow. I mean, this has never been true since 2020, since COVID. It's unfortunate. Now, a lot of jobs are coming back. I was laying on my sofa watching a movie yesterday. I saw for the first time, and I can't even months, a year, I saw four planes, four planes on a Sunday afternoon go right over my head. Just laying on the sofa, I thought, geez, I, 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 I'm like, wow, air travel really is back. I live in one of the busiest sections where there's all these diff different intersecting airports, JFK, LaGuardia, um, are right here, and I've seen no air travel. So jobs are coming back, and that's good for the economy, that's good for everybody, that's good for markets, that's good for companies. But it's, it's the kind of time where you could, it's, it's never too late to have a fallback. 
it's it's just never too late to have a fallback idea or the idea of extra money because we can be great employees, productive, outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter to our employer in the end if the company can't keep you on. And that is what has happened in these COVID times. And it's been frustrating for people. People are frustrated. People have had had enough of this. They want to get back to life. They want to get back to work. They want to get back to being productive. Talk, talk about confidence. If you can't get up and go to work, as great as it is to, if the government sends you a check, it's, you know, you're not going to get rich in government subsidies. I'll tell you that right now. And they never come in time for people either. And the reality is that, you know, it, it really, it, Working and being productive and being an engaged member of society and producing something and being a part of the workforce helps your confidence level. Even if you're going to work, you know, at a fast food restaurant, it's you're, you're a productive member of society. People need that. They need that to feel good about themselves. Trust me. I used to manage people. I used to manage people at the bank. I managed tellers. They were minimum wage. You, you know, you need to be a productive member of society. That's another thing. That's another thing. Banks still here in New York City are fully open, if you can even believe it. It's crazy. Any questions here so far? So many things in New York are closed. They're slowly, slowly coming back shorter hours or, you know, like restaurants are back 25%. I think April 1st, they're coming back 50% for indoor dining, but that's, it's, you know, it's slow. But anyways, it's a mind over matter. It's, it's a mind over matter. Again, you have to stay positive. You have to have the confidence. It doesn't mean that every trade is going to work. Some trades will lose. And when you have a losing trade, that's when you're challenged. When you make a mistake, that's when you're challenged. Nobody's challenged when the trade works. I call trade, it goes within seconds like Nike. Nobody's, nobody is, I mean, an idiot would make money doing that. You don't, you don't have to have, you could be the most insecure person in the world. And it, you know, you're not going to become confident with that. You, you have, it's doing it, learning it, understanding it, and how you deal with the losses. The days where you are down in a trade, are you going to come back and make things worse? Are you going to do like what I said, where you come back even stronger and you build yourself and you build yourself and you build your confidence up and you build your skill set up? And I go back and I look and I say, did I do something wrong? Did I make a mistake? What did I see here? Did I not see something in the market or whatever it is? And then you learn and you get better. And that's how you gain confidence too, okay? You're challenged when you take a trade that loses if you know what to do to not let it get the best of you. Any questions? Anyways, we were talking about share size a while ago here, about a half an hour ago. The money comes easy once you know what to do if you can plop on the size. But I definitely make myself available to people. I try to do my best to help people. You can use a system for day trading, swing trading, and options trading. And again, it's the same system no matter how you're doing it. You're just taking the trade in a different way if you're doing an option versus if you're doing a day trade. I like doing both because sometimes we have a busy time for day trades, sometimes not as busy for options or vice versa. So I, I like having the flexibility of doing both to be active, active in the market, active in my trades, active making money. But it's really how much you're risking versus where you're looking at the gap itself. You're looking for one to one ideally. I think 50% is good with an option. If you risk $1,000 and make 500, I think that's a good amount. If you risk a thousand, are you gonna kill it if you're up 50 bucks? Probably not, no. Yes, you're up green, but I would give the trade a chance to work, okay? Especially if you have time in it, which again, I'm trying to call out the weeklies or two weeks. But you have to be consistent. Consistent with what you risk, consistent with your stops, consistent with your strategy, okay? Learning is important. This isn't rocket science. This isn't brain surgery. You can learn it. You can ask me questions. I think learning is important before you risk money. I think that once you start to trade with real money, after you do the class, you know, you, you start to see how you feel with it and your own comfort level. And then you, things come up that you may have questions about. And then you realize, oh, I have a question about this or I don't understand this or whatever. Things that you didn't know before when you were just taking the class when you're actually doing it. 
but learning is a big piece of it. It's the knowledge. The knowledge helps you hold a trade like Facebook. You say, wait a minute, I know the buying's gonna come into this. Man, I was really right about that. If I had known that it was gonna go to 300 by, by today, I would have taken that out longer. I mean, I knew the buying was coming into Facebook. I, it was a great trade, but man, did it really come in. It really came in. That stock just rocketed more so than anything else, even the market. If you're ready and want to be successful as a trader, learning what I know and learning it from me is your greatest chance for success because I'm really here in my apartment right now, for now, still during COVID, and I'm taking special time to talk to people, to help them, to be in the room, to go over stuff in the room. Like the days like today where we don't train, I'll go over questions. We, we take the time, I teach. I really am trying to develop people into good traders, which has been successful. I've developed many, many people into becoming good traders. In fact, I had some very nice emails at the end of 2020 where people didn't resubscribe to the room or the options letter. They said, Melissa, I'm doing great. I don't need you anymore. I mean, that says a lot about one, my system, and two, you know, how well people are doing with me that they feel confident enough to go out and do it on their own. You know, everybody has a different learning curve. Again, it is not you should not feel bad if it takes you longer than others to learn. There's, this, this, this is not a contest between you and other people. The same thing with the amount of risk. This isn't a contest. Who can risk more money and who can make more money and, and who can learn it the faster? You should only be concerned with yourself. That's it. What do you need to understand better? What is not working for you? Should you cut your risk back? Should you get out of your trades a little earlier? Are you over trading? Are you not at your computer, at your desk at the right time, times that you need to be watching what's going on or whatever, whatever the case may be? Do you not understand the market? Do you not understand a gap at all? Any questions here? The more focused you want in your own success and invested in your own success, the better you're going to do, okay? It's about empowering yourself. And I'm here to teach the information and knowledge to help people get that. That is, that is my role as a, as a mentor. So the key into the system is in the 26 points. This is how I'm able to predict the moves the stock makes so accurately, including the market, including the market. So the class is called the Golden Gap System. It's one strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and fail all the time. I was very focused on making money, and I think that's how I developed the system, even though it took me three years. So learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps, and you don't need to do anything else. Because if your reason for doing this is to make money, this will make you money. So the class is this weekend, March 27th and 28th. If you want to sign up, I would not wait till the last minute because I've been running a spring spe special, and I already have people registered. The class is 9 to 5. It's $69.99 US dollars. If you're interested, email me for the forms at melissa at thestockswish.com. Now, I do a combo, which includes the trends and the golden gap. The trends is Tuesday, March 30th. Combo class tuition is $74.99. The spring special that I was just talking about, I'm running through Friday, is trains for the options letter and the day trade room free with the class through July 4th. Same price. Normally, you pay a price for the options newsletter and the room. This is a good deal. So this is good because you get the earning season. So like I said, earning season starts again in April. She'll so get all the options trades and all the day trades through earning season. Any questions from anyone here so far? I went over. Thank you, everyone, for staying. Shelly, do you have any questions? And anyone else? Ramon, do you understand buying power? Steady Eddie, I see you there. Are you going to come back? Galahad, are you back to trading? I'm thinking that you are. Ramon gets buying power. That's good. And again, if you have specific questions, just call a broker. Any broker would be happy to explain to you all about margin. Bogey, I see you there. One day, Bogey, you'll take my class. 
Before I retire. <laughs> you got to be available between 9.30 and 10. If you can come in a couple of days, Jay, just email me. I'll send you the trial. You can come in for one day or two days. The idea of the trial is just to get a feel for what we do to see if it's, you think it's something that you're interested in. Steady Eddie saving up. If you want, you get it free. You get the options that are in room free with the class till July 4th. With that much time free in the room in the letter, you'll know if you want to continue doing day trades, which is what we do in the room, or you'll know if you want to continue doing options, which is the options newsletter. Both are separate subscriptions. So within those many months free, you will know if you want to do both, if you want to sign up for both, or if you just want to sign up for one, or if you think you can do it on your own. You don't have to be in the room at all. You don't have to be on the options newsletter at all. You're gonna learn in the class how to rate the gaps and you can trade by yourself. The benefit of being in the room is that I'm calling the trades live and giving my market update daily. The benefit of being in the options newsletter is again, I'm calling the trades in the newsletter too. So the benefit is you're getting my calls, which is an over layer for you to, again, make it easier for you to learn and do it as you're going. But you will learn what to do that you can trade by yourself. The support of the room I think is beneficial and the support of the newsletter is beneficial again too to get my picks but you don't need them but yes there's there's a price after that thanks kathy for staying kathy's gotta go make dinner for her husband galahad's trading small galahad i hope you heard what i said earlier there's nothing demeaning in trading small. It doesn't, it's not, it does not demean you to take small size. I think that's something that you've struggled with over the years. That is something that you shouldn't feel embarrassed about. If that's what it is, that's what it is. It's, you know, you'll get to where you want to be over time. But if you're if you if it bothers you so much taking a hundred shares of something, it's almost like you're trading like an angry monster, because you're mad that you can only take a hundred shares or whatever the case may be. You're you're upset, you're angry that you can only take a small size. Then you're trading like an angry banshee, and see the market reads that too. It's all your energy about what you're doing. You have to feel good about it and you have to feel happy that you're doing it and excited and it's fun and it's glorious if you're mad when you're trading oh i hate that i can all not take thousands of shares i can't take seven thousand shares damn it do you see how like that's that whole frustration and the anger and the energy is like it's like a tornado be happy that you can trade it all there's people that don't even have a job they're homeless you know what i'm saying be, feel grateful for what you have that you could even come to me and even have taken the class. And Galahad, you've done the class. So you can come back to the room anytime. If you're happy, good. <laughs> and Kathy's cats are going to be happy. I have never heard of someone walking a cat in my whole life, Kathy. I've heard of walking dogs. I haven't heard of walking cats. That's that's a new one. That's a new one to me. <laughs> oh, my Lanta. All right. Have a great night, everyone. And if you want a trial, email me. If you're interested in the class, email me too. Very good. <laughs>